All right? Just like that. Perfect. Oh, hey there. Hey, do you have one of these fancy new mirrorless cameras? They're pretty awesome, right? But I found that they do have their drawbacks. And one of the biggest double-edged swords about a mirrorless camera like this is this. Not the rotating screen, but the fact that you can compose and take photos using the screen instead of using the viewfinder, or like we did in the old days of like two years ago, using the optical viewfinder. And in today's quick video, I want to give you three reasons why you should never, ever compose your images using the LCD screen if you are a portrait or headshot photographer. All right, but first I just need a little caffeine break. Mm. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Mm. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I love my mirrorless cameras. I don't see any reason to go back to shooting with a DSLR. I don't miss it at all. I think that the advantages of a mirrorless camera far, far, far outweigh the drawbacks, which I think are few and far between. But one thing that I've noticed when I got my Canon R5, which is what you're looking at right here, I was really happy because I now had the ability to shoot without putting the camera up to my eye and using the viewfinder. And that's because the camera will focus crazy good just by looking at the screen. And because it's a touch screen, I can just tap where I want to focus. So I started to kind of change my shooting habits, but I had an experience recently that reminded me why it's so important for us who are headshot or portrait photographers. Let me get out from behind the camera so you can see me, that's better, right? Why it's so important for us who are headshot and portrait photographers to use the viewfinder instead of the screen. So I'll tell you a little story. Last week, uh, I attended this really awesome conference with all of my headshot crew friends. And one of the things we did during this like three day photography fest is we got behind each other's cameras and took pictures of each other. And at one point I was, at a lot of points, I was the subject for a lot of people because you know, they just, because I can, can throw out that dynamite squinch and smirky smile without looking constipated. But anyway, I was the subject for a lot of my friends as they were practicing. And what I noticed with quite a few of them is that they're shooting like this instead of like this. And what I noticed as the subject is that I had these photographers looking at me like this, their cameras down here, and they're looking me dead in the eye and they're telling me, okay, do this, do that, blah, 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 you know, say hello to your mother for me, whatever. And I'm looking at them and not at the camera. So if you do that for your clients, you might wind up with headshots like where they look like this. If you're taking headshots of people, the main thing you want is for them to connect with their audience through the photo. And as we all know, the eyes are the windows to your soul except for the few of you who don't have a soul, then your eyes are just dead pools of evil. But for the rest of us, your eyes are the windows to your soul, so the most important, crucial thing you need to do if you're taking headshots with people is just make sure they're looking here and not here. And by not looking through the lens and composing with your LCD screen, although it's convenient, and there is some connection stuff that can happen, which is cool, the big problem there is that you're taking pictures of people and, and, and you might get a great shot, but they're looking up at you instead of into the camera. So how do you fix that? Well, we do this. Look through the viewfinder. Ah, there it is. And I can still connect with my client that way. This is not to say I will never fire the shutter if I'm not looking through there, but it's so much easier to just use the viewfinder and have the client look right in your lens than to stand up here and say, oh, look in my lens, look in my lens, because now you're giving them something else to do. And we already, if you're a great headshot photographer, you already have kind of a process that you're going through. And you don't want to add any more to that. You don't want to confuse people even more. Second reason why I do this is because it is impossible to see critical details on this little tiny screen. When I'm shooting, 
using the LCD screen, which I do sometimes, especially mostly if you want to have kind of like a weird angle and shoot down on people or something like that, uh, or when hand-holding the camera. The problem is, is that you can't see critical things like focus, like a hair out of place, like a necklace that's not in the right spot. It's much harder to see things on this little screen when you're, when you're like a foot away from it. And this is not good, obviously. You don't want that. But the minute you put your eye up to the screen, it's like magic. See everything now. It makes it so much easier for you as a photographer to see the critical areas of the photo, to see really the expression, to see really where all the hair, the clothes, and everything is, to see if there's like a janky eyebrow that you need to just go and tweeze, or anything like that. So, so the reason number two why you should never ever use the LCD screen is just for that. It's because you can't see the details. The third reason is kind of a combo reason. It could really be number three and number four, but I don't want to burden you with so many reasons. I feel like four reasons is just excessive for this particular topic. Reason number three, why you should always use the viewfinder is because you are much more stable. And now this is for also when you're off the tripod, right? The tripod's gonna make you stable. But when you're off the tripod, if you shoot with the camera up to your eye, it's much easier to keep the camera steady. So this means that if you're shooting at a slightly slower shutter speed, or if you're on that like zone where it might come out blurry, chances are it's gonna be blurry if you hold it out here. But if you stabilize the camera against your face, you're gonna get much more sharp results. The other half of that is that by putting your, the camera up to your eye, not only are you gonna get better, sharper results when hand-holding, but you're also eliminating all distractions. And in a studio setting like this, like you're staring, this, you're where you'd be if you were my client right now. So you get to see this. I mean, now you know why people come to me for headshots. It's not just the great photos. It's, it's for the Adonis-like features they get to look at. But I digress. The other reason is in the studio, it's, if you was to see from the other side, there's nothing. It's just a blank wall. It's very bare. There's not a lot of distractions. But when you're outside, putting the camera up to your eye is a great way to eliminate all of the peripheral distractions and just see, not only make sure that you're going to get sharper results, but also see exactly what's in your viewfinder. It makes it much easier. So this is why you should never, ever, ever use your screen, flippy or otherwise, twisty, tilty, flippy or otherwise, to compose pictures. It's just a bad idea. When I say never, ever, 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 what I really mean is almost never. But, you know, that doesn't sound as definitive and, and you know, it'll, this is a much more clickable title. You get that, right? But in reality, there are times that call for it. So let's talk about that for a second. So in my world, the only time I'm going to take the camera away from my eye is when I'm from my cold dead hands. I'm kidding, that's a joke. When I want to get an angle that I really can't achieve with having the camera up to my eye. So like I kind of said a second ago, I, I love the flippy screen. I enjoy it, even though it's, it makes me a little nervous. You can't really use it when you're tethering so well either. But Outside, I'll use the flippy screen if I want to get a weird angle, or even in my studio. So if I take the camera off the tripod and I want to get sort of a, a high angle shooting down on someone, which I do sometimes, although usually I'm shooting slightly up towards them, or if I want to go to a, a, a low angle, the screen is great, don't get me wrong. But that's the only time I'm going to do it because it really makes it harder to get the great shot. And that's what we want to do as photographers. So that's basically it. Um, I'm not going to rant too long about this. It's just a quick video on a little topic that I thought of and I thought that it would benefit some of my fellow photographer friends out there in YouTube land and Facebook land and Metaverse and Avatarville and wherever else you are. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you do and feel free to totally disagree with me in the comments. It wouldn't be the first time. Go out, use your camera, take some awesome pictures, have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.